Hi, my name is Cindy Rang. And my name is Eliza Rang. And we're going to show you how to make a patriotic monk rug. My daughter and I have owned and operated a busy quilt shop in Washington State for over 20 years. We have a retreat center, an active YouTube channel, and a large pattern line featuring our creations. My two sons work on machines. One daughter-in-law is our videographer and the other is a long-arm quilter. We are a family that love each other, we laugh together, and every once in a while we get some work done. We have a crew that are saints for their efforts at keeping us on track. Thanks for joining us on our wild ride. So this month, we are of course making a patriotic mug rug, yes. um, which is especially nice for our family since we are a military family. Mm -hmm. And so um, so we just had something for the 4th of July. We went ahead and just did um, the United mm -hmm. States. And I realized that there's a lot of people that are watching us from other countries. But of course, since we're celebrating the 4th of July, you know, it's our Independence Day. So um, so this is just a super simple, fusible mug rug. Um, when I did this one, I just put a little square up at the top of it, which is kind of fun. And we're going to show you that. But Eliza is going to do one with a star. Well, it's so, not really square. It's because it's going to be those. You're right. But I started with a square. And then I cut it. You cut it? I did. I'll show you why. So, um, so this is your pattern and it's available in a download below and you can see that it has a star. Mm -hmm. um, your other option is um, the three inch square. We'll show you that one. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can do this. You can even make it a little bit bigger. Um, we made a pillow with this on it and then we just put a tiny little like crystal at the places where um, we have um, family that live um, elsewhere. So that would kind of be a fun thing. We should just do that as a separate class just to kind of show yeah. people what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But anyway, all kinds of fun things that you can do with an outline of the United States. So um, all you need for this, we did put some kits together and it tells you the amounts on here. But all you need for a background is a piece that's six and a half by eight and a half. And then um, we decided to use a red stripe for the background here. So this piece is just an eight by eight piece. We have a four by four piece of a little blue star or whatever you'd like to put on there. And then your backing, this is like what? This is like a nine by 11 piece because we decided with our backing to bring that over as our binding just because it makes it kind of nice and easy. The only other thing you're going to need is a little piece of batting and some fusible web. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about this every time in terms of batting. When what you're making is a mug rug, um, the batting isn't quite as critical. If you're doing something, um, an oven mitt or something, you really do want to make sure that you're using something that's insulative. But um, for this, the whole idea is that a mug rug is bigger than a coaster because you can put your mug on it plus a little snack. So it really just has to have um, um, an ability to absorb uh, yes. moisture and temperature. So um, a little bit of temperature, so we're all good. So yeah, that's all you're gonna need. And what we're using today and what we've put in the kits are the little fusible battings. We really like that because it just holds everything in place while you're mm -hmm. stitching it down, right? Um, okay, so uh, let's see, let's just go ahead and get started. This is super fast. So all we're gonna do is using a pencil, not a pen, we're going to trace, and by we I mean you, I'll just keep yakking, drinking my coffee while you're tracing. She's going to trace the um, United States and we have already reversed this pattern. And what we mean by that is that when you're tracing something that's going to go on the wrong side of your fabric that you're gonna flip over, you want it to be the opposite. So whenever you're doing something like this where there is a true west and east, you know, a true one side, um, other side of something or um, like words or letters or numbers or something like that. Um, you do want to make sure that when you start your tracing that it is reversed and our pattern is reversed because, oh, did this get plugged in? Yeah. Uh, because she's going to iron this to the wrong side of her fabric. The reason that we use pencil is because our, um, fusible web it has kind of a little plasticized kind of paper and so if you use ink you'll end up getting um, funny little it'll like rest on top and so you can end up having an ink transfer onto your fabric 
And we like the Steamacine product, but if there's something else that you like, Fusible Web is a product. It isn't necessarily the brand name. There's lots of different brands. All right, are you good? Yeah. All right, so um, yes, let's go ahead and trace the star onto there. And let's just use the corner so you have a good piece left over. Um, okay, so she has traced this out. And I don't know if you can see, can they see that in the camera? No, probably not. Trust us, she has traced it. And then we're just gonna kind of rough cut. You don't have to cut out on the line. Save all of your energy for when you are cutting out the fabric. Toss this. And then... Went a little oh, that's okay. No one sees your tracing, so if your tracing is a little bit strange, life is going to be fine. You want me to so, cut this? yeah, and just kind of rough cut around that. So then we're going to peel this off, and um, again, whenever you're peeling off your fusible web, what happens is you have paper on one side, paper on the other side, and the stuff that actually makes it into a um, an iron-on product is we don't want to throw this away. No, we don't want to throw that way. We can use that. Is this stuff. So can you see that? There's kind of a funny little sticky stuff in the inside. So when you peel that off, you just want to make sure that that sticky stuff is over on the side of your pattern. Does that make sense? Every once in a while, somebody will peel that off and they don't, they didn't realize that the stuff that is really making it an iron on is on the wrong side. So just make sure it's on the side that you need. And then we're going to put it on our fabric. And I'm just gonna kinda try to make sure that they our lines are they straight. Did, they did. And you did that one? Okay, and then we'll go ahead and keep and that. And the star is, has stars all over it. I know, it's not a cool fabric. You have to iron those down. Okay, so once we've done that, now what she's gonna do is she's just going to press it. And what's gonna happen is that will make sure that this fabric then becomes basically an iron on patch. All right, fantastic. I'll take that one and you do this one. And if you're afraid of touching your fingers to the iron, your finger's not big enough for that one. These are these little thermal thimbles that she loves playing with. And um, what they do is they come in a set of three. So there's a big one for your thumb and then there's two others. So that if your fingers get in the way there, see your fingers aren't getting hot, right? Except for that poor little thumb that's unprotected, but that's okay. All right. Okay. So she's pressed this down. And so now what's going to happen is we're going to cut it out. And the scissors that we really like to use, these are, um, there's Havel's. Um, or there's some that are, um, who's the other one by Karen K. Buckley. We really like them because they're um, Teflon coated. And so that means that while she's cutting, um, just come in. Okay, yeah. You're good. Wherever you want to come in. And so they are um, Teflon coated so that when you're cutting through something that's kind of sticky, then um, it doesn't leave anything gummy on there. Let me show you a little trick. Can I show you a little trick? When you're cutting, you it's hard to cut this, right? So this is kind of hard to cut because again, let me show you on this. So see all of those little squiggly lines, you know, down around the Gulf of Mexico and all of those down there. Yeah, they're kind of hard. And then up here, we've got our little Washington Peninsula. And so what'll happen is when you're cutting that, see where I'm at? If I'm up here so that I can kind of, and then what I'm doing is my um, scissors are pretty much staying straight and all I'm doing is I'm turning, see how I'm turning my fabric with my hand? Instead of your scissors. Yeah, instead of turning my scissors. So I'm turning this in and as I'm coming around, see I'm still holding my scissors straight so that they are in a normal place. And see, watch now, watch what's gonna happen, boom and I'm just bringing my fabric around. And that's a whole lot easier than doing this, right? Okay, let me try that. Because now we're getting into all of that little wiggly squiggly, whatever's going on down there near Florida, I don't know. And keep your fingers out of the way. Very good. And see also, 
see where you're at on the scissors, come up a little bit more. Yeah. And the reason for that Sometimes the fabric doesn't want to Let me show you one other thing. Let me show you one other thing. So when you're starting, if you're starting down here at the tip, what's going to happen is, and see, I'm just slowly, watch my hand here. I'm just slowly squeezing down. But see, then what happens is I run out of room to cut. So that's why I'm starting up here so that as I'm turning everything, I'm slowly closing those scissors, mm -hmm. cutting a little bit more. So I'll end up cutting like, oh, I don't know, you know, and so see where I'm at? I'm right up at the top, so I'm just going to go ahead and slide, slide, slide as I am bringing these scissors. So I'm not doing, I'm not doing that movement. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because if you're doing that movement, you'll have funny little jaggedy things. And this way you are getting it nice and so watch on the corner here. So see, it's all just one cut and that's what makes that nice and smooth right there. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. There you go. Now you, got, you have all of the wiggly, squiggly. You left me. I know. I left you the hard part. You can do this though. Oh, see, very good. See, because your this hand is kind of doing all the work by just moving it as you're smoothly cutting there. That's very good. Look at that! Cutting like a pro. I'd recognize Louisiana anywhere. Baton Rouge. So You're crazy. um I know, I'm sorry. I haven't had enough coffee yet. I need my mug rub. Um so uh the other thing about these scissors, so they are Teflon coated, but while you're cutting through fusible product, what will still end up happening is you'll end up with sometimes a funny little bit of a residue on your scissors. And so if you have a little scrap of wool, 100% wool um, that's been felted, you can use that to clean that, that little black residue off of your scissors. Um, if you don't do that, your scissors will slowly just get stickier, stickier, stickier. If you do not have any wool, if you don't um, cut with wool, just put a little note next time you order anything from us. Just say, hey, can you give me a scrap of wool? We have tons of it and we'll just throw some in your package and you can use that for cleaning your scissors off. The other thing about these scissors is they have a serrated edge. So what that means is, of course, it has little teeth. And so while she's able to cut, it will actually kind of grip her fabric. And you don't really notice that until you cut with it. As soon as you start cutting with something with a serrated tip, you really notice that you have far more control because your scissors are not slipping. How you doing around Texas? Hey. I'm just saying, that's where you're at. Right there, that's Houston. So pretty much I'm cutting up the United States. You are cutting up the United States. That's why you need to stay in the water. Good. You're doing really good. Your fingers are so close to the scissors. Oh, it's because you're, oh, I see. Because your hands are so little. Here's a big one. You're doing good. It's fantastic. So when we did, I'm going to keep talking. When we did this one, um, we just did something because we wanted it to look more like the flag. So we cut a three inch square out. And then all I did was I folded over. Um, we're going to pretend that this is it. I just pressed over one edge and the bottom edge, fused it, and then we fused it to the top. I'm going to hold this up close here. And so we fused it up to the top up here. And then you can see that we just did a little top stitch to hold that down. Um, and then what we did is when we cut off the rest of that, that ended up looking more like a flag. But so this is one option. But what Eliza is going to do is she's going to go ahead and cut out a star. So go ahead and cut out a star. And you can really modify this any way that you would like to. That's the fun thing about a pattern is a pattern is just what is in somebody's head. Um, but you can modify it in any way that you'd like. You could add a bunch of stars. You could add three stars. You could, what else could you do to it? 
could make it a different color. I don't know about the different color. I'm very patriotic. Has to be red, white, and blue. You can make a firework. You can make a firework. Yeah, you could do that. You like fireworks. I am not a fan. Do you know why? They're fires. So fires. Oh, is that why they're called fireworks? Yeah. The fireworks. Yeah. This one's kind of a bit easy. I like to watch them if somebody else is doing them, but I don't like... Don't want it? Well, living in the country all those years with all of the dry weeds and tumbleweeds and... Scary. And the dogs don't like it. Mm. Why? They're because dogs. it's loud noise. I know, but it's loud noises, so they don't know. They think somebody's shooting at them. Mm. We already would hate living out there. Mm-hmm. Usually we never take Rarity to fireworks because she's gun, um, she does not yeah, like guns. gun shine. That's, I think that's true of a lot. All right, so, so here is our US of A. We need to move this garbage up for us, don't we? There we go. Um, where are you going to put your star? So when you are ready Can I to, well, I mean, within reason, let's not be crazy. Where are you gonna put it? You can put it anywhere. So it's sticky when we pulled it off. Wee. Well, there you go. Should I okay, it? now you just iron it, iron it down. And see, you really could add another star. You could add a smaller star. You could do all kinds of things, Ooh, you right? You can make a, like a little pattern. Big star, medium star, little star. You could go crazy. Yeah. A bunch of Do you stars. know what the state flag of Alaska is? Mm -mm. It's, I think it's stars in the shape of the Little Dipper, right? Pretty sure. Can you peel it off? Yeah. Okay, so then once you've done that, you have your background. And I don't know if you can tell or not, this is a really cool grunge that we've put in the kits. All right, she's just gonna peel that off. The other thing that's nice about Fusible Web is that it kind of like, so I'm gonna hold this up for one second. It kind of like seals the edges just a little bit so that when you're doing a raw edge applique, which is really what you're doing with this Fusible applique, um, um, it doesn't get super raggedy. So you can see that on this one, it's all been quilted down, but, um, but there's no raw um, wily edges. We're gonna put this right in the center. And then when we are fairly certain that it's in the center, we're gonna go ahead and iron it down. And then you can decide if you want to um, stitch all the way around that star or if you just want to quilt the whole thing down. We do think it is important to go ahead and quilt down your mug rug because, you know, if you're going to have a cup of coffee and a cookie or something like that, uh, chances are you're going to need to launder them regularly. And so we always make some that you can just pop in the washer and the dryer. This particular one, what we did in terms of stitching, can you see on this mm -hmm. one, is I so, used that wing foot. Do we have one of those back here? No. Um, we have a little wing foot that we like to use and um, it's one of those feet where it has um, little lines on it. I'm going to grab one. Well, we'll grab one because yeah, do you want to quilt it the same way? Because um, then what you do is it gives you a little um, a reference so that as you're going, you can do these perfect little um, half inch quilting lines. So it's a very modern quilted look. It's kind of nice. And then what happens with that, of course, is that you're able to stitch down all of those edges. So it works really well. All right, so all we're gonna do is we're going to layer this now. So where's our piece of, oh, here it is. So we have our piece of, should I iron it again? Yeah, let's go ahead and, but you want to be kind of careful now when you iron this because this is a, oh, here we go, magically, this is the foot. So if you can see that in there, hold on one second, I'm going to tell you a little trick about that. So it looks like that. Because, so this is fusible batting, right? And so with your fusible batting, what will happen is this edge, if you get this on your iron, what's going to happen? It's Do you know? 
it's going to smoke, it's going to stick, and things are going to get um, super icky. And so... Um, Did you bring it? I'm, no, I'm looking for your backing. Oh, the iron cleaner? Um, I think we usually keep it like right underneath here. No, it's somewhere. So there is iron cleaner so that if you do get any fusible web residue or um, fusible vatting residue on your iron, all you have to do is with that iron clean. It looks like a dryer sheet. It is not a dryer sheet. It's just um, that kind of a... Um, fabric that has that's permeated with a special stuff that will clean your iron so it works really well. So um, what we'll do is we have to figure out so um, do you want it to stay this same size? I mean I feel like we kind of decided that this was the right size and so um, I think that it works pretty well but you can um, you can trim this down a little bit if you want to. I'm going to trim this down. Okay, so what we did was we went ahead and trimmed down our batting piece to the same size as the front of our mug rug. Um, and there are two different types of fusible batting, one that has fusible on just one side and one that has fusible on both sides. Both sides is probably better because it holds everything down, but we selected the on one side. And so you have to decide which thing you don't want to slip. And for me, I feel like I want to make sure that my background, my backing is going to stay where it's supposed to stay. So my fusible side or Eliza's fusible side is going to go down towards the backing. And that's what we're doing is we're just making our little quilt sandwich here. So it looks like this. And the other thing, too, is that you've got, um, did you think it was a quilt sandwich? That's what it's called. Is that a new term? Quilt sandwich. That's a real thing. And so we've got our backing, our batting, and our top. When we so put them all together, bread, meat, meat, bread. bread. Yeah, that's a real term, quilt sandwich. You think I made that up? Yeah. I should have made it up. Did. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say I made it up, but everybody else uses it now. Okay, that's not true. Okay, so anyway, so um, so our backing piece, the way that this has been cut is you've got about an inch and a quarter all the way around. We're gonna leave that like that and then we're gonna show you this really cool way to go ahead and finish your binding. And if you wanted to take your, um, oops, your ruler over the top just to kind of make sure that that's about where you're at, you can do that. But um, so now what we're gonna do Oops, I feel like my eyes are crooked. There we go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to iron this whole thing down. And the reason I'm flipping it over, go ahead, is because the fusible part is up next to the backing. So she's just gonna iron that whole thing down so that it won't slip while she's doing her quilting. Okay, so the next step is gonna be the quilting. So where she's going to start will be right through the center. And again, that's why for me, for the added money of doing the um, um, both sides uh, fusible for your batting, it's not really necessary unless you are really nervous about slipping. But once you've got your first stitch all the way through, you're kind of good to go. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have you sit down at the machine and let's put on, let me change your foot. Okay, so we have put our um, our wing foot on. We call it a wing foot, but I think that the real term for it is multi-line decorative foot. And what's really nice about it, again, is you'll see how these lines work. So what we're going to do is we've got our quilt sandwich down here. We're going to go ahead and put down our presser foot, make sure everything is nice and straight. And when you're quilting, you don't have to have um, a super close stitch. Uh, um, um, oops, let me tuck that under there. Um, a super close stitch length because you're going through multiple layers. So you could make your stitches a little bit bigger if you'd like to. So what's nice is that we have these lines on our fabric and we have the line here. So we can go ahead and make sure that things kind of stay straight. Not that they have to, you know, you can kind of do it however you like, but we're gonna get this first line on. 
And we're just gonna go all the way to the edge. And when we go all the way to the edge, we're gonna stop with our needle in the down position and we're just going to come forward. And there's a little line back here. So I was on the first one. I'm gonna go until I'm on the second one. Do you see where that's at? Can you see? Good. And then I'm gonna turn it. And then what will happen is this will line up with this one. And so now, Right yeah, now it's on the way. And we're just going to keep going. And then when we get down here, I'm going to go ahead and just stitch right down until I'm right there. See where I'm at? Put my needle in the down position, turn it lining up with that line right there and then just keep going and oh see how sometimes it'll just bring that up tuck all that down because with our fusing if it just didn't there we go because that's the whole idea and that's what we're doing right is we're stitching it all down <laughs> all right i'm gonna let you stitch away. And so she'll just keep stitching down, back, down. I'm going to pick up this one to show you guys while she's stitching. So this one I did, I'm going to flip it around so you can see the back and see how close they are. So see this one is super close together. She's doing um, probably twice as far apart, but um, there's multiple lines on that, so you'd be able to do it as close or as far apart as you'd like to and keep the whole thing straight. So as she gets to the end, you're good. You've got your needle in a down position. And you went a little bit far, so let's just go ahead and lift this up and lift up our needle because um, you don't want to be out here in your binding. So now let's just go ahead and go down to, I think that I'm in the right spot. Go ahead and tap your foot. Oh yeah, or you can hit the button. Put your needle down. There you go. And now turn. There you go. All right, she's going to finish quilting this and then we're going to show you a binding trick. Um, what you might what you might find when you're doing it instead of going around and around and around it might be easier each time to just cut your thread and then go around instead of stitch down the side I just sort of stitch down the side because I know that my binding is going to cover that that um, stitch line but it was a little bit confusing for Eliza so we're just going to cut it each time and then she's also just going to just add it a little extra press um, if you're finding that you have some sort of a weird little wow in it and you're good. All right.
right. Good job. Okay, so it's all quilted. Okay, so uh, so she got all of her quilting done, and there's a couple options for binding. Um, we did a video last year that we'll link below, and it has seven different popular methods for binding. So if when you get it done, if things slid just a little bit and you feel like you need to square everything up, um, then you can go ahead and do that and just add any other binding. It also gives you an opportunity to add a different color if you'd like to do that. Or if you would like to do the um, one of my favorites and what we kind of intended for this one is a self-mitered binding. And um, it is included in that video, um, but all you'd have to do is we'll trim this off all the way around so that she has one inch of backing. So I'm going to trim there and there. And there. Okay, and once you've trimmed everything off, then all you have to do is you fold this over. We have some little ends, some little threads that we'll kind of clean up, but she's gonna be sewing for a little bit, so we just thought we would show you how this starts. This is a really um, fun technique. We have made baby quilts this way where we just end up with um, two pieces of flannel. The back one is just a little bit bigger um, and it uh, creates this really nice mitered binding. Um, and you can make it a lot thicker even if you'd like to. And we, um, we show in the other video that's linked um, how to do that. So once you've done that, so you bring this over and then up on the top up here, you cut this off at a 45 degree angle. So let's see, I'm gonna line up our ruler. So here's our 45 degree, come up here. And we give ourselves a quarter of an inch from the tip up. And again, if you can't see real up close, you'd be able to see in that other video and we cut this off. And this always kind of freaks people out to cut that off because that just doesn't seem like it's right. But then what you do, and you've got that little extra quarter inch right there, you're going to bring this around and you sew right sides together. And then you make a little clip in there, just a tiny little clip in that seam. And then what'll happen is it'll fold right over on top of itself and you have this nice little miter that looks like that and that's all sewn and then all she'll have to do is come back and top sew that down is so that she'll do that and that's what we did on that one yeah actually i don't know if that's what we did on this one it might not be no this one is regular binding but that's what we're going to do on this one so um, so same thing, so we'll just do each one. We're just going to cut these. And what happens is you have to cut them first. Before you sew. Yeah, because otherwise it gets a little bit um, difficult because it automatically will fold. And so um, the only real trick to it is to make sure you've got that quarter of an inch from the tip going out so that um, otherwise what'll happen is it'll kind of bunch up just a little bit. And then same thing, then it's just gonna go ahead and fold down over the top. So it'll double fold itself. It'll double fold itself, yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's called a self-mitered binding. So that's how she's gonna finish this one. Then she'll clean up her little edges on the back and she's all done. So I think that's it, right? Did we finish up everything? She did the quilting, working on the binding. We'll do a little picture at the end. So um, 
I guess we're good, right? Mm-hmm. Love you. All right. Happy Fourth uh, of July. Yes. Happy Independence Day. Thanks for sewing with us. Thank you for watching our video. We invite you to leave a comment, hit the like button, or better yet, subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can also visit our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or Pinterest pages, or find all of those things and our online store at fabricpatch.net. Oh no, bloopers. Bloopers. No. Hey, well then, that's what you gotta do, take one. I'll stop you. <laughs> all right. Hi, my. I'm sorry, I'm not my okay, ready? All right. Yes. Hi, my name is Cindy Rang. I'm Eliza Rang. <laughs> we'll try it again, ready? Just keep, keep going. Yeah. Hi, my name is Cindy Rang. I'm Eliza Rang. <laughs> and my name's Eliza Rang. And my name's Eliza Rang. Not, it's robotic. You're, my name is Eliza Rang. You hear the difference? I'm Eliza Ray. Maybe we'll try it again. Let's try it again. Last time? Yeah. Yeah.